quantization and non uniform quantization and uh, on your on this uh, on the left hand side this is uniform quantization and the right hand side there is a non uniform quantization this is a case of strong signal that means the uh, large amplitude sinusoid and another is the weak signal weak amplitude sinusoid and if you see for uh, weak signal rather rather for large signal that is not a problem as well because the quantization error is same for uh, all, means all levels but for weak signal we have seen that quantization level is quantization error is smaller for small magnitude signal that we have seen over here and and as a result if you see that means on the when you are doing the uniform quantization on the weak signal then you are you have only two different levels this level and this level in order to represent the whole dynamic range of the signal but when if you put in contrary if you if you use the non uniform quantization then you will have some sort of uh, 6 7 8 9 uh, maybe maybe 10 it means this this five different levels of quantization this five different uh, levels of quantization uh, for 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 representing this uh, weak signal. So as a result, so when your quantization level is non-uniform and at the at the um, and here as the as the levels are dense, so that means your quantization error is very small. As a result, your signal to noise ratio that we have seen that will that will will improve for this non-uniform quantization. For the weak signals. So these we have studied, and uh, and we, we we explained we have explained these things. That means, say for non-uniform quantization, this is if you see that means for non-uniform quantization, this is my input and this is the output level. Now that means when input level is between. Say this is the input uh, at a particular level. This is the mean. So that means at the at the, if I just uh, do it like this, so that means your if it is input level between this zone, so you are at 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 the same output. But suddenly if you cross this one, you will jump to the next one, and you see that what about my quantization error? Quantization error is my Right. So this is this is my quantization error Q, but for the for the non for here, what is my quantization error? Sorry. Mm -hmm. For 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 higher amplitude signal, this is my quantization. Okay, this is my Q. Okay. Now, so that is, this is my non this is my non uniform quantization. But how do we do the non uniform quantization? Because then you. But what, what we do actually basically the first step we just do input to output mapping. That means we we make a we we generate a transformation function like this. Okay. We generate a transformation function like this, and where actually we are we are just transforming. This input so if it is first of all let us let us take the dotted line that means this is a some sort of a y equal to x x is the input signal y is the output signal okay so so then actually that there is no change in the PDF of the input signal and output signal but you see that when I have a, this type of transformation that means if I take uh, this input at this point and if I take the input at that point. Say if I take the input at that point, I will get the point over here, and if I get an input here, then I will get. The, so that means your input at the low amplitude value that will be stretched, and your output at the high amplitude value here, and say the same distance is somewhere here. That it will be. Compressed. Okay, this is this much small. So that means your PDA. I am, I am basically changing the probability density function of of the output from the input by this transformation. Okay, so that means out 
when your signal's amplitude level is high, they are much more the, the neighboring values are much more complex. When the signal, the when the amplitude values are small, then the small change, the equal amount of change, these changes are equal. These changes they are much stretched over here. That means this is my say delta one, delta two. This is my epsilon one, epsilon two. So epsilon two is greater than rather smaller than epsilon one, delta one equal to delta. For equal deltas, say rather forget about delta one and delta two. For equal deltas, your epsilon two will be smaller than epsilon one. That we understand from the from your from, from these uh, characteristics. Okay. So, now the question is that first we transform from, that means this is some sort of a x, this is, this is my y, this is x. Now, after getting this y, that means say this is your x t, you are getting an y t, this y t, you just, this y t you give the input here and do the uniform quantization. Actually, in that case, basically you will, so that means you are using your existing uniform quantization, but that uniform quantization is followed by the, by a mapping like this. Okay. So this is called some sort of a compression characteristics. Compression means, that means for equal delta, this higher values will be complex. So then basically, with, if, you, if you just cut together these two, basically you are getting this non-uniform quantization. Basic, basic, basic output will be the non-uniform quantization. Okay. So, and that, what is the characteristic? There are two common characteristics that we use that this is in North America, there's a mu law and a law. These are the compression characteristics. So, first of all, this is called compression characteristics. These characteristics is called this output input characteristic. This is called compression characteristics. So, now, so there are two typical compression characteristics. One is this uh, mu law, which is basically a logarithmic law. And depending on the value of mu, that it, it becomes uh, the, the uh, mu is the parameter of this uh, uh, mu law compression characteristic. And and signal function that you know, signal function or sine function that you uh, that you know, that is if it is, it is for one, if it is positive, if it is zero, minus one. If, so that means depending on the value of mu, depending on the value of mu, it is when mu equal to zero, then it is the linear characteristics that is no compression. So with the changing mu, basically it is, it is moving, it is becoming steeper actually. And this is your input x by x plus y by y max. They have normalized it to, to, to make it the scale zero to one. Okay, not x by x max. Please try to say that both negative and uh, positive will be taken care of here. Please remember this is mod x. Okay, so similarly, I have a so this is mainly used in this this micro new law is taken. Okay, it is in the North America and in Europe it is a law that is. Uh, Confusion that is mainly in Europe, that is an A law, that is also correct, that this is Y versus X. Basic nature is same, so that means it is, it is some, it's, it's a bit different uh, than the previous one, but basic, if you see the characteristics, then basic things are same actually. Okay, so, so either of these characteristics are used to make the non-uniform quantization. Okay, so this this is this is about uh, non-uniform quantization in order to improve the SNR figure at the low amplitude value of the signal or weak signals. Sir, yes. So what is x max? Just wait, wait. Yes. X max is the maximum value of X, 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 C. Say this is some sort of a X, T kind of thing. Because you are taking the, see, first, 
First, you try to understand. Past, I will sorry, this is not expand. Yes, yes, it is a good question. Say, I have a sign, sir. Hmm. Now, first, what I will do? I will convert it to like this mod x, mod x kind of thing. Then I will take the x. So that means if if your signal is something like that, then if I just do it like this, then this is. It. Because I have to make the make the range zero to one. That's it. Is it okay? Hello. Sir, but X is in uh, uh, X is time, no sir. Like what is X? X. Sir, X is the function value or the X axis value? X is the function value of. So x is the function value or the uh, x axis value. Signal amplitude. Okay, okay, sir. Yeah, this is x t versus t. Now you have the characteristics. You put each value of x over here and get the y. Then you will get the y t. Okay, sir. Let's see, sir. Then y t versus t. So this is this is your this is x t. This is y t. Okay, sir. So that means by by this compounding characteristics, by this compression characteristics, we are basically changing the PDF of the x. As simple as that. Nothing else. Anyway, uh, then uh, so then we are we are talking about PCM waveform, which we have already studied, and next we will discuss little bit of uh, and we have seen that. Uh, means different spectral attributes of PCM characteristics. Now there are two things. One is that do please, please try to because we were many many times people are confused that beats per PCM watt and beats per PCM symbol. Two things. First of all, that beats per PCM watt we generally represent by L. Bits per symbol we represent by k. Okay, there are two things, and sometimes we say m equal to two to the power k. Sometimes we say m a equal to. So usually that a equal to two to the power l, and we say m equal to two to the power k. So this is the, so now that that say we are we are talking about say just we had an analog signal and. Just I'm, I'm going to. You can remember. Say I have these characteristics. So what we have, have we had? I have a natural sampling value. Then we said no. I have only say I I I have I I will quantize it. How will I quantize? I will do the quantization based on some error rate. Error metric means maximum error I can quantify. Quantization has some error. Let me say 1.3 to 1.5. That is 0.2. This is the error. 3.6 to say minus 0.1 is my error. So here it is plus 0.2. Here it is plus 0.2. Something like that. I have some error metric. Say so I am saying that to say my, my my maximum error can be 0.2. 0.2 volt or something. Okay. So based on that, I have done some calculations and I have seen that okay we. If it is uh, eight different levels with my dynamic range of the signal, okay. If I can quantize it at eight different levels, my maximum error cannot, maximum quantization error cannot go beyond point. Okay. So say this is I have done calculation. I will, I will discuss it. How how do we do this calculation? Okay. So then actually that eight level means a equal to eight, and say then we say to two to the power l how many how many bits are uh, grouped together in order to represent each PCM sequence, each PCM watt. Okay. So this is some sort of a bits per PCM watt. That means here it is per PCM watt is per PCM watt means say, this is my PCM port number of PCM watt. Okay. Or per quantized PCM values. Now so that means three bits grouped together. In order to represent this port number five, so I have a equal to three. Okay. So now that another thing is that that so this this is this is your 
A. Okay, that is bits per PCM watt. This, this is this is this bits per PCM watt. Another is the bits per SIM watt. Bits per SIM watt means say I like to do some sort of a baseband coding, but something like that instead of PCM, I will do some sort of a uh, multi-level uh, baseband coding. I, I'm, I'm coming to it. What is multi-level uh, kind of uh, baseband modulation? And in that case, so I have a bit stream, and with that bit stream, I will see in binary one. What I have done, one I have represented in such a way, zero I have. So that means two bits, no, no grouping. But here I am saying no for modulation. I will again so from from this bit stream, I will group, say some two bits group together, three bits group together, and I will make some. So that means m a equal to two to the power k. Then this k bits group together, and m number of symbols. That I like to just uh, I, I like to make m different with uh, electrical signals. I what, what I like to transmit. Okay, so then that is called some sort of a MRE transmission that we talked about, and we will discuss it further. So this is m. Okay, this is for basically different MRE pulse modulation. I am coming with the MRE pulse modulation, and another is that. The k equal to the power l. That is the bits per PCM watt. Now, how will I choose this small l? Okay. So the previous one we were seeing that point two I will take. So how the point two will will it come? Means how? What is the design guideline? That that is that means that here that PCM watt size. That means here actually you see that I have some some guideline l equal to some log two one by two p bits something something like that. They just come. Okay, so let us let us discuss this. Okay, how how do I choose L? Okay. Now, first of all, that say let the magnitude of the quantization error that I told that say my quantization error is point two volt is allowed. Okay, now quantization distortion error is mod because it will be plus it will be minus. Okay, and which is basically it can be refraction of peak to peak analog voltage. That means say I have a something like. Okay, so now that what about the, the quantization error maximum for for uniform quantization? I am talking about quantization error maximum is Q by two that we know. Okay, so now for this Q by two, Q what is my Q? If you remember, that means Q by two is say Q is V P P by L minus one something. Do you remember? That is my quantization. Hmm. Yes. So, so this is my from here to here. Top to bottom is VPP, VPP, and then but I have L levels, okay, from here to here. But each one is L levels means what? L levels means one to like that. Each one is Q. That means from here to here it is LQ. But I have a this side q by two here, another q by two. So I can approximately take it as l into q by two. Okay, approximately I can take v p v p equal to l q by two. Okay. So now that that I have that I am. So uh, they have done something. So basically, what I what I do, uh, Q equal to I am writing 
VPP by L. Okay. So basically, ideally, it should be VPP by L minus one. But you see that from the picture, you will see that it is, it is coming approximately it will be VPP by L, and there's a by two. So so it is. So you see that there's an approximation. So that means it is e, e max is mod e max is VPP by two L. So that means mod VPP. So if you just replace this e, that means e less than PVP. This is my basic basic uh, design guideline. So that means e max must be also less than this. So that means VPP by two L should be less than PVP peak. So that means you remove this V peak, V V rather peak to peak. Okay. So I have P and one by two L. Okay. Now L is basically two to the power L. Now if you, and if you just play a little bit with this, finally you will get. Your basic guideline is something like this: that a is greater than log base to one by two p. What is my p? P is the fraction of the peak to peak voltage. Okay, so that means eighteen percent of the peak to peak voltage. Okay, so you are five percent of the peak to peak voltage that I can allow. So five percent of the peak to peak voltage that can be that that max error I can I can tolerate. Okay, so depending on that, that means if you If you allow uh, more percentage, then what will happen? One so that means p will be higher. P will be higher means one by two p will be smaller. So a will also. So that means one by one by two p will be smaller. Log of this one will be smaller. So that means l can be lower. That means you can you can go for a quartz edit. You can go for a some sort of a, instead of say ten bit quantization, you can go for five bit quantization. Okay, because your error will be more because you are allowing the error. You know, maybe at 40 percent of the 40 percent of VPP time are allowing the error, but then your deconstruction will be horrible. Okay, generally we talk about 5 percent time. Okay, so now or maybe some sometimes we say plus minus 1 percent. Okay, 5 percent, 1 percent. These are the basic figure, not 30 percent. Okay, so 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 that means that. So this is my design guideline. That means depending on the value of p, that means one percent or five percent. Generally, one percent or five percent. Fine, a will come out. Okay. Next is so this is about a. Sir. Yes. So can you once again tell what is small l? Sir. Okay. So what is small wait, l? Wait, wait, wait. I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm coming. Wait, wait, wait. Could you remember this picture? Yes, sir. Okay. So I have my analog signal, one point three, three point six, two point six, something, something. Now I have, now I have to do quantization. Quantization means quantization. How will I do the quantization? I will put the ADC. Okay. Now ADC. How do I choose? Eight bit ADC, four bit ADC, two bit ADC, twelve bit ADC. Say I am saying. Say I am I am saying no no I I may allow I keep at two point five percent of the peak error as a quantization. Okay, so that is my P that one point two point five percent three percent one percent of peak to peak that I am. Depending on I have got some calculation. Say forget about at at this point you have got some L. Okay, L greater than equal to log of P one by P something you have found. Okay, that formula just we discussed. What is that L? L basically say you have got L equal to 2.9 means say L equal to 3, then 2 to the power L equal to 8. Okay, so you are basically L equal to 3 means you are basically using a 3 bit ADC guy. Okay, yes. where you will get some sort of eight different levels of. So that is one. You are so this will give you L is basically 2 to the power L is the number of different quantizations. Okay, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, so that means that means then L three three means bits per PCM watt. You see? Do you agree? Each one day PCM watt is what? How to represent? One one point three is the natural. One times one is one point five. If I have a three bits to three bits representation, depending on my distortion criteria, I have a So that means whole dynamic range. I will make it in eight different equal levels. So eight different equal levels means five, seven. These are the zero to seven some some level. 
So each level I have to again represent it. I have to send the information. So this five I am representing one zero one seven. I am representing triple one. Okay. So I have. I am sending this information as a PCM sequence. This sequence by PCM waveform. I am just doing the coding, the Manchester coding, energy del, energy del, whatever you like, and I am transmitting the electrical. Is it clear? So these three from this discussion right there, that is bits per PCM. That we are discussing. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Now that so this is about L. Now in the previously we talked about that there's an L and there's a K, two different. Some sort of a L equal to two divided by M equal to. So this M is some sort of a MRE modulation. Many a times you will listen that M MRE when K equal to one, that means one bit to two, and then I have a M equal to two, that is a binary time. Let let me discuss. That means first of all that uh, there are three basic ways to modulate the information on a sequence of pulses. First of all that I am I am on a digital communication I am doing some sort of a pulse pulse modulation. This is all about pulse, just like that, not any sequence. Now one is the pulse amplitude, another is the pulse position. You can modulate. Modulate means you can change. One way you can change the pulse amplitude. One way you can change the pulse position. Another way you can change the pulse width or duration. Means pulse duration means pulse width. So that is PAM, PPM, and PWM. Okay, these three ways. These three are the popular ways. Okay, and and when we change this pulse sampling, when the amplitude of the pulse or position of the pulse or the width of the pulse to any value. Okay, then. Means when so I am getting some information, say I am from. So that means you see that means when information samples without any quantization are modulated onto pulses, then the resulting modulation is analog pulse modulation, which are which we are not interested in this class. But rather, when information samples are first quantized, okay, yielding symbols from an MRE alphabet set. I am I am discussing it. information samples. Let me say analog signal first quantized. Yielding symbols from MRD alphabet set, then modulated on two pulses. Then the resulting pulse modulation is digital. Please digital pulse modulation. We refer to MRD pulse modulation. MRD pulse modulation means it is digital. First of all, MRD pulse modulation means it is. So that means in your pulse modulation, pulse modulation, m discrete things you can send either m m discrete amplitude, m discrete position, m m discrete so width. But when you are doing some sort of a m discrete things, then it is digital modulation. Okay, you are not sending just any any pulse duration or any pulse width or any pulse amplitude. Is it clear? So MRE pulse module that is your M is finite that means say eight or four or sixteen different so so depend so this is called the the M the digital modulation is the that 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 means it is MRE digital pulse modulation so digi digital is overstatement when you are saying M M fixed but otherwise when it is analog modulation analog pulse modulation then so it is it is it is M is infinity anything anything okay. Now you see that in case of in case of MRE PAM, that is then MRE PAM, MRE PWM, and MRE PPM. 
there are three things. At this aim, allowable amplitude levels are assigned to each of the impossible symbols. I try to understand. First of all, that I have a continuous time signal. I have say depending on the distortion criteria, I have um, means I have decided okay, this many bits I will uh, this this may this is the maximum quantization error I can allow from that. That means this much P P means this much percentage of DP peak to peak. From there, I have got the bits. That means this many number of L I will I have to use in order to represent the uh, uh, this this quantize quantize it. So that means say I have got L equal to three. So that means eight different levels and all these things. After that, I have got uh, some sort of a uh, representation some one zero zero one zero zero something that we just saw. Earlier we did PCM waveform, so that means from there I have taken one bit, one is represented by some electrical waveform, zero is represented by another electrical waveform. Here we are departing. That means here we are we have a departure. What? No, I, on this bit I am not generating uh, the electrical waveform. Rather I am taking. No, I will do the some sort of. But instead of all this one zero, I, I will do a two bits group together. And I will make some sort of a four different symbols. That means say zero zero one 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 zero one. Okay, now what will I do for M? Again, I, I will do MRE PAM kind of thing. MRE PAM is what? For 0, 0, I will send one voltage level. For 1, 1, I will send another voltage level. For 1, 0, I will send another voltage level. For 0, 1, I will send another voltage level. Okay, pulse duration and pulse width. In that way also, I can, trans I can transmit it. Okay, so, and if it is, if it is in, so that means PCM is basically same as binary PAM. Okay, so that means you have only two different levels. Okay, for zero, generally you may have also three different levels, but for, for, for normal, say for generally for one, one level for zero, NRJ, L, or uh, RJ type of thing. That means I have a two different levels, so it is some sort of a light of binary time. Okay, but in case of MRE PPM waveform, MRE PPM waveform, you see. The modulation is carried by delaying or advancing a pulse occurrence by an amount that corresponding to the value of information symbol. That means, uh, and MRE pulse duration or pulse. Uh, is a pulse position and PDM is the pulse width, basically. That means that in case of MRE PDM waveform, pulse duration or pulse width, PDM or PWM. Modulation is affected by varying the pulse width by an amount that corresponds to the value of symbol. For both PPM and PWM, the pulse amplitude is held constant. Okay, sometimes we use for pulse width modulation, sometimes we will send the fat, fat, uh, fat pulse, sometimes we will send the thin pulse, depending on say, say, say instead of PAM, I am sending say some sort of a uh, four RD, four RD means two bits together. For any uh, pulse width modulation, so for zero zero I will say send the thinnest pulse. For zero one I will send a medium type of uh, width pulse. For one zero a bit uh, fat, and the you know, one one maybe the means, means most of the I mean, that's the thickest pulse I will transfer. But I am keeping the amplitude for all the pulses, also, all different symbols. Okay, so similarly it is true for pulse position. So that means PAM pulse and that pulse it is like an amplitude modulation and PPM and PDM they are like phase and frequency modulation. That is mainly this we discuss in the analog analog communication pulse, but here analog communication is generally not covered okay, in data communication. So those who have studied analog communication in electronics department, they may appreciate it. But even without that, it, it is okay because nowadays a lot of most it is it's a digital communication. So analog so so if you, if you get the basic idea that is if you can stretch it that if i don't have any i can i can do any duration any duration delay or any duration advance or any any width i can i can transmit any sort of analog modification now this that one thing that when um, for what place i don't understand so the, then the next question is that why will i use P, when i will use pcm or Rather, I will use some sort of a uh, MRE PM kind. Now, 
Negative signal. Imari PAM means it is some sort of a multi-level signal. That means for zero zero, I am sending one voltage level. For zero one, I am sending another voltage level. For one zero, I am sending another voltage level. For one one, I am sending a the fourth and final voltage level. Now say and for PCM, what I am so but if I can understand for G, here I am changing four different voltage level. But but four different voltage level. But say if I have a bit stream of, but, just, but this is important. Consider a bit stream with data rate R, okay, R bits per second. That means when you are doing some sort of a PCM, that means each each bit you have to transmit information. That are if you do some sort of a MRD plan, that means k bits k bit groups, then I will have m into m equal to to the power k level pulses for transmission. When with such multi-level signal, if I say or MRE pan, that means each pulse waveform can now represent k bit symbol. Please try to understand because I will first accumulate k number of bits, say two bits. Then I will make a pulse of the suitable amplitude depending on the value of this k bit symbol, and then I will transfer it. Okay, so that means it is some sort of a R by k symbols per second I am transmitting. So that is a factor k slower than the bit stream. And thus, this for this for a given data rate, multi-level signaling. So signaling is multi-level. Try to understand. When n greater than two, this will reduce the symbol transmitted per second. Okay. Or in, in other words, that MRE PAM as opposed to binary PCM can be used to reduce the transmission bandwidth requirement of the channel. Please try to understand. Because see, what is what is? Uh, let me let me explain things in a. Because if it is some sort of a zero and one kind of, I have to do say zero like this, then one like this. Okay. Now instead of that, for zero one, I will if I just if it is PCM, that means what I am doing this. Yes, something. So that means each jar I have a some sort of a, uh, or maybe there is a bandwidth. But there I am doing oh zero one. I have taken something, and what I will do? I will oh I have to transmit some parts in this amplitude. So so that means this one is less bandwidth intensive than. This one. Okay. So that means that if you. So, is it clear or shall I explain it a bit? Elaborate. Hello. So that means that MRE uh, PAM and PCM for PCM you have. More bandwidth, more transmission bandwidth. PCM signaling, you have more transmission bandwidth requirement, but MRE PAM you don't have. But then why PCM is used? Why not MRE PAM is uh, not used? But MRE PAM, say that means see earlier, but we have that means say I am instead of uh, PCM, I am using eight different means uh, some sort of a three bits loop together and eight MRE PAM. So that means eight different voltage levels I have to consider. So at the receiver, but PCM, I have a two different voltage. Okay, though when so at the receiver side, the detection detection is much easier because you are detecting on between the two different uh, type of pulses. But here in eightary pulse, so you are rather detecting eight different pulses. So eight different pulses detection is always difficult, and for for getting the equal error level, so you have to give greater amount of It requires a greater amount of energy for equivalent detection performance. This is very important, and there's a figure of EB by DC DB by DB. I will discuss this later. This one we have to. This is a figure of merit kind of thing. But equal average power in the binary and octal pulses, binary PCM and octal binary pulses. It is it is easier to detect binary pulses because the detector has more signal energy per level for making the binary decision that an ten and eight level. So then, 
this is about this is about uh, and sometimes that uh, that means that is when you are using PCM, that means you are almost giving some sort of a theta inch as transmission bandwidth for a given data rate compared to the octal pulses. Since each octal pulses must be represented by three binary pulses. Okay. And and this, this is that way. So that means that you have you have, you have some sort of a trade-off. I will use MRE PAM or binary PC. Okay. Now let us let us let us take an example. Let me say I have a signal and say let, let us take the previous previous example that means the ADC example. That means I have uh, some sort of a, if you if you remember that means my 1.3 converted to 1.5, then that code number was 5, 5 was represented by 1, 5 the code number, 5, then the code number was 7, then code number was 6. If you can if you can see carefully just that picture again. Then what is my 5, 7, 6, 4, 3, something 80 but in level. Similarly, if we just, it's a bit different, but it is, it is say I have a, uh, Say I have a signal, I have uh, that amplitude I have encoded, okay, and finally I have uh, the code number and I have got, that means if you say first, first code is 5, then second code is 7, then third code is 5, like that, I have, I have, I have a, it is, it is not amplitude in voltage, please remember, I have a, it is not amplitude, means actually I should not write it's an, yes, amplitude, but amplitude. these are the codes, eight different, eight different quantization. Means I have done a eight level quantization and zero is the minimum and seven is the maximum. Three bits. So that means three bits um, in that way, three bits, three bit quantizer kind of thing. And and each one is some sort of a quantized value. So it is five, seven, five in that way. And these ones, so that means eight different amplitude level I am transmitting. This is my m equal to eight. That means k equal to three mre pm. Okay. Now that is eight level signaling. Sometimes we do some sort of a uh, I mean, two-level signaling. That means if I, if I do this two-level signaling, five means what? Five means if you see that means if I do a PCM type of waveform, then what will happen? Five means one zero one triple one one zero one. Then uh, say two means one zero one zero like like that. I have to represent. And I am doing some sort of a say energet kind of thing. Then one say energet, sorry, or energet can say one maybe uh, plus something, plus say amplitude is plus three volt and say zero maybe minus three volt, some, something like that. So say, what about energet? Energet, uh, yes, one is some, say some plus five volt. This is minus five volt, so I am I am doing so. It is it is like that. I I one. So I think you, you should you should you should discard this uh, this distortion. And I am taking some sort of an energy L kind of thing. Energy L. Okay. Then what will happen? For one, I will represent this zero. I will represent negative pass one. I will again negative pass. Then say I have given a gap kind of thing. Okay, you may give gap, you may not give gap. So then you have to do triple one. So you see that this one, this type of waveform, always it is bandwidth intensive than this one. But here the beauty is that you have to have the that if the bandwidth is uh, there in the network, then you have to only detect whether it is a plus or minus, only two different ways, plus five volt or minus five volt. But here you have to represent 
that because this one you have, to, you have eight different voltage level finally you have to detect it because detection of this one is much much more difficult okay so let us let us see this example that means say i have a analog waveform the maximum frequency is the base error it is analog waveform of a uh, band limited signal with a maximum frequency of a 3 kilohertz fm capital fm is to be transmitted over a mre fm system where the number of pulse pulse level is 16 that means i have to do 16 sorry 16 are the fm okay that means k equal to 4 M M equal to sixteen equal to two fifty K equal to four. So what about and quantization distortion that is specified? Not to exceed plus minus one percent of the peak to peak voltage. So from there I can. So this is my P, and I will get some the value of the L because L is what it is. It is plus minus one percent. So P will be two percent minus one to plus one. Okay. So please try to understand. P is plus minus one percent, and here it is what is P? It is mod E should be less than P V peak to peak. Okay. So here it is what it is, what it is, it is saying. One percent of the peak to peak. So that means mod E should be what? Why two percent? P by P will be two percent. Because minus one to plus one, both 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 the things you have to consider. So that's why that it is p equal to point zero two. Finally, a is five point six. That means I have taken a six bits per sample. So six bits per PCM watt. Okay. So now with the six bits per PCM watt, so I am doing an Iquist sampling. So minimum something rate is Fs equal to 2 Fm, is it is capital, Fs equal to 2 into Fm, Fm is some sort of a 3 kilohertz or something, Fm is 3 kilohertz, so Fx is a 6 kilohertz, 6 kilo samples per second, okay, so what is, so 6 kilo, now each one is represented by 6 bits, so I'm sort of a 36 kilo kb, kbps. Okay, so what is your bit rate? Bit rate is 6 into 6, that is 36 kbps. Okay, now, now if I use multi, so this is my if I use PCM kind. Okay, PCM 36 kilobit per second, my signal should be like this. Now if I use a multi level uh, MRE, MRE PAM, so I have a m equal to 16 level, so that is k equal to 4. That means I will take 4 bits grouped together. 4 bits grouped together means what about my symbol uh, symbol rate? So that is uh, this is R B. What about my uh, symbol rate? Symbol rate will be divided by 4, 9 kbps. Okay, so 9000 plus symbols per second and because I am doing MRE, uh, because I am, see, please try to understand this 9 kbps and 36 kbps. Basically, you are not sending beams. You are basically sending the signals, electrical signals. So that kbps means basically you are, uh, you basically transmitting the, that means in this case, MRE PAM means 16 different amplitude level electrical signals. Okay, so here the requirement is that that 
Fifty-six kbps equivalent bandwidth you have to consume. You are consuming idea, but here yeah, nine kilobit per second, nine kbps equivalent analog bandwidth you are consuming. We are consuming. Okay, so so that means that PAM, or if you use sixteen PAM, then basically your it is much more bandwidth efficient. And what is my bandwidth efficiency? Bandwidth efficiency is some sort of R by W. R by W is R is 36 bits per second and W is 12 hertz. Yes, what is 12 hertz? Because we talked about if the if the transmission bandwidth equals 12 kilohertz, then you have some sort of a means if you do the data throughput per hertz, data throughput per hertz for PCM case, it is three bits per second per hertz. Okay, so that means in one hard waveform, in one hard waveform, basically what you are saying in one hard waveform, in one second, you are sending. This is one second. You are sending, say, three minutes. Say something like this. It is all equivalent. Say zero. Actually, the zero one zero kind. Say zero one zero one zero. I see you are not sending zero one zero. You are just transmitting the information carried by the zero one. You know, to a one hard signal. It is an average analysis kind of thing. This is called the bandwidth efficiency. So next class we will talk about. Uh, uh, we will talk about uh, the baseband coding in details, and then we will discuss about correlative coding. And tomorrow I shall take the class. Okay, I will send you the link. Okay, tomorrow the same time five to six I will take the class. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I will take the class tomorrow.